three types of drunks in a marriage, and this one is the dumb one. Hey guys, welcome to another Mids Watch. Great comment here from <laughs> Born Red Pill. How funny is that? Everybody, there was always two types of usernames that people would use when they were talking about their, their marriages and sex lives. There was either something something wolf or something something alpha. It was always about dogs being alpha or red. So I don't know. Not the most creative sorts of fellows anyway. So the guy has a question. How do I deal with her snide condescending remarks? When your woman responds to it, how you deal with it? And he had taken this originally to the red pill and then he came to the married red pill after because most likely he wasn't receiving the answers he wanted which is funny because a lot of guys do that and what happens is they'll go to the red pill which trends younger and a lot more autistic <laughs> granted there's some switched on guys there but a lot of autism and they'll tell him you know next the bitch the very standard stuff if you've been dating a girl for three weeks how would you deal with it and then they come to the married red pill thinking, well, this might be better because then they'll give me some better advice. And most of the time, the guys are actually harsher in here, bringing up the how you only put up with this shit because you're useless. And they kind of get mad thinking, aren't you guys supposed to be the softer, gentler one? It's like, no, because now you have an expectation to hold up. <laughs> um, so he's like, instead of uh, propagating bad advice, I replaced it with something more worth it. And I guess... He had asked the question, got some answers, came here, provided his answers after doing it, after he like edited his original comment about asking about problems. Oh, man, and there's some guys in here from the Red Pill that I like, so I'm not going to say who, but uh, some tactics he suggests you mix and match, and I'll tell you which ones are good and bad. He says, retaliate in kind, know her insecurities and hit them hard. Some women go crazy for this, some hate it, either works. If your woman is snide and condescending to you, and your answer is to be snide and condescending back? That is horrible frame. You're basically let her set the terms of your engagement. Not a good look. I don't know this whole, if she's insecure about it, you can totally do this and like, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to win some battle of the sexes? I don't know about you guys, but like 130 pound chick soaking wet is not my idea of my, uh, of my arch nemesis. Uh, retaliate with flirty, flirty glory. That's cocky funny, I mean, it's. Generally speaking, it doesn't solve the problem. It's again, it's more of a witty reaction, right? She gets some snide shit to you. You make it super flirty. You're cocky funny. It's very sprink some al sprinkle some alpha on it. Again, doesn't solve the problem. You don't want your wife berating you in front of other people in public. That's like a big relationship no-no, by the way. Uh, demand she leaves. This is best at her house or a public place. I am here to tell you flat out that is a horrible piece of advice. Having a temper tantrum when your wife is snide and condescending to you in public is the easiest way to make you look like the big asshole. Not only the big asshole, but you're probably abusive. And if she's doing it to set you up, like, it's it's an off chance that wives are doing this to goad their husband into a fight. But I guarantee you that uh, Zach guy that we did the, the Rule Zero on where he was beating up his wife, she did that. She just did some snide condescending stuff and he loses his shit. And now he's on the news. Rest warrants out. You don't want to be that guy. Uh, the next one is a, a form of amused mastery. It's like, what did you say? Like, uh, excuse me? That can work, but you can't give it to that guy as a can line because you kind of have to, you have to master it in order to use amused mastery. If you get some guy with like weak body language, fairly hurt that you said some mean stuff, coming at her like this is just going to look incongruent and you're just going to get your ass handed to you by a wee little girl. So you don't want that either. Uh, ignore it. I mean, it's the same issue, right? Imagine the kid just ignores getting bullied. Well, do they still bully him? Well, that depends. Did he ignore it like a bitch or not? So it's, again, these things don't really solve the problem. It's all surface level stuff. Uh, walk away so far as the best one he's had. Just say nothing, get up and leave. Yeah, it's, and to be fair, it's not a solution, but it's a skill set to master. Is the idea that when somebody is not providing value to you, you only have a few tools to enforce those boundaries. And that's affection, attention, and commitment. In this case, somebody calling you a bitch is like, whatever. So you just get up, walk away, pull your attention. Good. Uh, and then, right, so I was saying, that one's a little more sophisticated. Again, these are all just like surface level and they're very annoying. Anyways, I'm not going to read all of them because they're kind of uh, whatever. 
But funny enough, then Jack and I kind of look into the same thing here and we notice, you guys notice the theme, by the way, is chicks and dudes and covert contracts. For the most part, most of these very simple relationship problems are because somebody has some undiscussed expectations and builds up resentment when they don't receive them. So unfortunately, there's a bad covert contract going on here. You made it clear to your wife that you... Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. <laughs> there it is. When your woman responds with a snide or condescending remark, how do you deal with it? And Jack's with me here. Like, it's the wrong question. You frame this absolutely horribly. A respectful relationship should not have snide or condescending remarks. Now, nobody's perfect, of course. Everybody has their grumpy days. Some days people haven't slept, they're hungry, and they got to throw some shit out. They usually apologize. But if you're dealing with a regular stream of snide remarks, I don't think an arsenal of comebacks is going to solve the fundamental problem. Snide remarks are a sign of disrespect. They're insults. Someone that insults you is not somebody that cares about you and cares that you have a positive opinion of them or not. Now, nobody's perfect. Our frustrations boil over. We sometimes say mean things because we feel hurt and our gut reaction is to hurt somebody back. Now, as adults, adults, we're supposed to be disciplined not to deal with that with our loved ones. But like I said, nobody's perfect. The key here is does your wife respect you enough to try to be perfect? Or does she just let loose with her her uh, abuse in you as an emotional punching bag? Now, in my observation, snide remarks can indicate a lot about whether your wife thinks you're too beta or not. Too much comfort in a relationship, not enough attraction, basically. Or does she just let loose as an emotional punching bag because she feels like it? Learn it so you can forget it and start enjoying it. So if she's respectful to her colleagues, her friends, her family, even when they disagree, but then unloads on you with no filter, what does that say about her opinion of you? It's not a good one. Snide remarks in public are even worse. She's literally parading around your betaness. Now, some of the comebacks posted here are good, but this is not how you deal with snide remarks in the long term. You have to command respect. Jack actually says demand, but it's command. Subtle difference. We won't get into that here, but... If you feel uncomfortable commanding it, then that because you don't feel like be because you don't feel like you deserve it, and maybe you don't. Focus on your map. That's the the male action plan. That's everything we've been talking about with dread so far. Raise your sexual market value, and if needed, utilize some dread. It's a lot more effective than the trading the adult equivalent of yo mama slams. I like it because this is what I like. The difference between pickup and novice red pill and a more response like a like a full-on like red pilled you understand that it's not life isn't just a series of surface level interactions canned responses only get you so far and the guys who are good at pickup back and i mentioned pickup now because it was like the precursor to the red pill but they gave you canned openers hey i gotta go back see my friends a minute uh, we're having an argument, hoping he can sort out for us. His account is cheating if you're in a different area code than somebody else. And go. Now that's an opener. So I think they call it the opinion opener. You know, a time constraint, whatever. And it sounds great and it works well. The thing is, if you don't know why you're using it, that's all you can do. You got that one. And then if they don't give you the, the canned responses, which is yes or no, and then giggling and happiness, then you're basically at a loss. Same thing as here. If you have a bunch of canned responses, what do I do when my wife's being a bitch? What do I do when my wife's being snide and condescending? What do I do when she calls me a beta male? And I'm like, oh, just tell her this. Oh, just tell her that. Here's seven tips or tricks on how to solve this problem. Number five will surprise you. You're not solving the problem. And that's why you see me. If I'm on Twitter, I am shitting on these alpha male coach guru accounts non-stop it's like a it's like my side hustle is basically shitting on retards <laughs> but here's the thing they're not solving the problem they're telling you some surface level stuff like you i guarantee you if you have a wife condescending remark comment get 10 of your favorite content creators to like address it and what you're going to get is a giant collection of of answers oh just retaliate in kind here's how you teach that bitch here's how you hold that bitch accountable i know it's about half of them anyway Holding her accountable is not the issue, and that's not a thing anyway, but whatever. 
And other guys will be like, oh, that's fine. You just got to be more attractive. And you flirt with it and you do this. And you're like, that's not helpful either. Because the issue isn't you don't have an answer when she calls you a bitch in front of your family. The answer is that your wife thinks it's perfectly okay to call you a bitch in front of people in public. Multiple reasons why. One, who sets the frame of that relationship? You know what happens when you call your partner a bitch in front of everybody? It does two things. One, you establish that that person's a bitch. And two, you establish that you have no taste. Like, what does that say about you? Hey, this is the mother of my kids. She's an asshole. And they're saying, well, why did you pick an asshole? Why did you bring her out? And why are you telling me? So yeah, the retaliating flirty glory thing doesn't solve that either. Demand she leaves. Have a temper tantrum. You know what's great, by the way, in social settings? As a guy, getting angry at the wee little girl who's got a bit of an attitude. If you don't believe me, go look up Sydney Watson v. Jack Murphy and get back to me and I'll tell you exactly how that plays out. I'll give you a hint. Any of your sex tapes will be released. That's how much they respect the whammon. The ignore it doesn't solve it. None of this stuff solves it. But again, commanding respect is about more than that interaction. As much as you want to say this is how you solve this specific problem, the answer is you have a bunch of work ahead of you because all the foundations that you needed to have in place to teach her that this is not a good thing are not there. If you're not attractive, if you're a pushover, if you're a nice guy, if you're too non-assertive, if you're not willing to walk away, all these little things, and it's called, and it encompasses a concept called the male action plan or map. I don't like calling it map very awesome because it turns out on the internet there's another acronym for map, which is a little more Chris hansen -y, and I don't want people to get confused. Because the last thing I need is on CNN asking this guy, what's he talking about maps about? Why is there a triangle in the background of this thing? And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sakes. But yeah, so the point to take away from this is understand there is no tips and there's no tricks. There's no shortcuts. There's no scenarios. There's no seven ways to get this done and number five will surprise you. That does not exist. And the only reason you're seeing it is because somebody online who's running his mouth with pretty eyes, luscious locks, and a perfect smile is saying that because he wants your money. By the way, fuck files and uh, Amazon everywhere. Go buy yourself a copy, ebook or printed. It's fine by me. It's a good read either way. Also on Audible, if you can't read, I'll read it to you. <laughs> All right, enough goofing around. So enjoy. And just remember, when everybody tells you, do you even lift, bro? That's because that's the foundation. If you can't start that, you can't do anything. Get that in lock and then just start going up, up the escalator. Get everything done before it. And then by the time you have your wife calling you a bitch in public, you could probably just give her a side eye. like, And then that's it. That's the end of it. Actually, yeah. Good example. Mother-in-laws. Everybody has a mother-in-law. And everybody's girl hates their mother-in-law. They always have a fight with her. Oh, mom did this. Mom did that. Did you ever notice that those girls that have a horrible time with their mom, the husband going there, and the, the mother-in-law is on best behavior? That's what you're looking for. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.